All right. Well, I hope you all had a good week. Did you have a good week? Yeah? Did you stay in faith this week? You didn't waver? You didn't waver back and forth and question whether you're saved and you're a believer and you didn't let the enemy talk you out of your faith. You held, your, you held the line all week, I hope. That's my prayer that you did that. You know, that message that we preached last week should have strengthened you. It should have made you strong. And I believe that the message preached this week will do the same. And that's really, that's how this should work. You know, we come, we hear the word preached out in faith. You receive the word, you act on it, and you start getting results. And uh, we start getting tougher. We start getting tougher uh, for the army of God. And that's, that's what we want to do. Now, let's review a little bit because I see some new faces. I know all of you weren't here last week, but now let's review what we ministered on. Last week, we talked about the fact that we are redeemed, didn't we? Do you remember that? We talked about the fact that we are redeemed as God's children. We've been bought and paid for by the blood of the lamb. And we went into some detail about that. We talked about the fall of man. We talked about sin how sin entered the world through Adam and Eve. Remember, they let go of God and turned and grabbed a hold of Satan, giving him place uh, in their life on this earth. And then uh, we went into detail about Jesus. We shined a light on Jesus and what he did for us. It took a great price, a precious blood to redeem us, didn't it? But when Jesus, when he died on the cross as the sinless, spotless blood of the lamb, he went and straight, uh, stripped Satan of any authority he ha would have over you if you would believe, if you would have faith. Jesus told us he took the keys of death in the grave from Satan. He, you know, Satan, at one time in your life, he had a hold of you, had a stronghold on you. But when Jesus died, he broke that stronghold and he took the keys to death and separation from God. And so now... You and I, we are back in this neutral position, if you will, where you can choose. You can choose whether you'll serve God and his kingdom, or you can choose whether you will trust Satan and you'll follow him. You can make Satan the Lord of your life if you choose. You have a free will to choose that. And Satan's got a kingdom, and he's got followers, but not you, right? You're not one of those. So hopefully uh, you read your chapter. Did you read your chapter this week? Anybody? Can anybody tell me what chapter it was that we were supposed, the Lord prompted us to read? Anybody? Can they tell me? Romans 5. Good, good, good. Amen. If, if you read that chapter and you read some of those verses that were in the insert in the bulletin, after you heard that preached message, those verses should have come alive to you, man. Did that happen? When you read that, those verses just came alive to you. And that's how, this, that's how this works. The preached word will confirm the written word. The written word will confirm the preached word. And when this happens, you can get in faith for this. And you can say, you know, I, I believe that. Praise God, I'm going to act on that. And that's, that's how these things should function and operate. So this week, we're going to progress. We're going to keep moving forward here. And we're going to be talking about now that you know what redemption is, you know about the blood of Jesus, you know why it took the blood to redeem you. Uh, hopefully you've put your faith in him. You've been baptized into the body of believers. You're a born again child of God. Now what? I mean, what's the point of that? Is, is it just that we hold on till something kills us here on the earth and then we go to heaven? Is that the point or is there more maybe? Yeah, no, maybe, yeah, there's more, there's more in there. As a child of God, once you got saved, that's the beginning of the road for you as a believer, not the end, that's the beginning of the road. That's a, the start of your fresh start as a child of God. And I don't know about you, but uh, if you were living like me, you're thankful for a fresh start. How about you? Were you perfect or did you need some help? You needed a fresh start when you got saved. I, I'm thankful for the blood of Jesus and for a fresh start. So turn with me, if you would, to Ephesians, the second chapter. Ephesians chapter 2. We're going to put our verses on the screen. I always like to do that because it's good for you to let your eyes rest on the scriptures as we're studying them. Now, this week, I'm going to attempt, well, I'm not going to attempt, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do something that I have never done before 
in a setting like this, but I believe it's by the Lord's direction and, and his unction that I would do it. Um, I'm going to do more teaching than preaching. And the, the big difference that you'll notice, for me to teach, I'm going to have to look down at my notes and I'm going to read a point and then we'll discuss it. Uh, we'll talk about it. Uh, my flesh is not comfortable with this. I, I'm very uncomfortable. I, I don't like looking down. When I'm ministering, I want to look at you. I want to see if you're awake and throw stuff at you and make sure you're in the game with us. But, and so I don't like looking down. But the Lord's showing me this is something I have to train in. This is something I have to learn and develop in. Because last week, second service. Now, if you've never stood up and preached two services back to back, uh, I'm telling you, you need the Lord's help to do that. You, to do two, you need the Lord's help. And last week's second service, there was a couple times that I just lost. I just, I mean, it was like I didn't even know where I was at or what I was doing. I just broke focus, and it was for different reasons. But it happened a couple times, and the Lord helped us get through it. But uh, I came over here. I had a little outline here that I was going to look at, and I always make some bullet points and stuff. And I came over here and looked down at this, and it looked like Chinese on there. I mean, I was like, uh, what in the world? And, you know, the thing is, as a teacher or a preacher, you need to be able to, to stop, slow down, and, and see what the Lord would have you minister. Because if you get to moving too quick, you could miss something that could change your life if I get to moving too fast, if the Holy Spirit gives us those words, and we want to give him time. And so I'm learning. And I, I'm, I'm willing to step out here and, and trust the Lord's going to help me. And you'll be believing with me, won't you? You're in faith with me that God's going to help us. And uh, so you'll notice me looking down, and that's good. That's what we want. So Ephesians chapter 2, please. Verse 8 says, God saved you by his grace when you believed. And you cannot take credit for this. Mm -mm. You cannot take credit for this. It is a gift from God. Salvation is not a reward for the good things you've done. So you can't go around boasting about how God saved you because of something you did. You know, well, yeah, but, you know, I, uh, I, I shared the gospel with two of my coworkers. And then I, I prayed for my neighbor. And I, I helped him find his cat. I was a good neighbor. And uh, then I prayed, that one time I prayed for that guy to get healed. And when I laid hands on him, he recovered instantly. And because of that, God saved me. <laughs> no, he didn't. He didn't save you because of that. Now, he may allow you to participate in some things like that, but he didn't save you because of it. You're saved by grace through faith. And that's the message that we preached last week through the redeeming blood of Jesus. And then by putting faith in that blood, that's how you are saved. Verse uh, 10 says, for we are God's masterpiece. Hmm. What do y'all think about that? You, you think of yourself as one of God's masterpieces? Is that how you see yourself? A masterpiece of, for God? Do you ever introduce yourself to somebody that way? Hey, I, I'm Aaron. I'm God's masterpiece. It's a pleasure to meet you. <laughs> now, we might ought to start because uh, that would open up some conversation real quick, wouldn't it? You're, you're what? Who? Who are you? You're what? Well, I'm, I'm God's masterpiece. I'm Aaron. And uh, you could tell them. You could say, well, are you a born again child of God? Yeah. Well, what's your name? Scott. Well, then you're Scott, God's masterpiece. Praise God. Good to meet you. I mean, that would open up conversation. Or if they said, nah, I don't believe in that. I don't believe in God. You could say, well... Uh, you could be one of God's masterpieces too. You want, to tell, you want me to tell you how? So, I mean, we, you know, we laugh, but is it in the scripture that you are one of God's masterpieces? It's in there, isn't it? You guys awake? We need to do jumping jacks or something? It's quiet in here. <laughs> uh, it goes on to say there, God has created us a new in Christ Jesus. You were made a new creation, a new creature in Christ Jesus when you got saved. The word tells us you're translated out of the kingdom of darkness and you're translated into the kingdom of light, into God's kingdom, the kingdom of Christ. Jesus is your savior. You've been translated out of that kingdom. Why did he do that? 
so that you can live like a hellion here on the earth until you die and then hopefully go to heaven? Is that, was that the purpose? No, it tells us right here in this verse. When he created you anew, you were created anew so that you can do the good things he planned for you long ago. So you can do the good things God planned for you long ago. Did you know God's got a good plan for your life? A kingdom plan? A plan to advance his kingdom on the earth? You've got a role to play. Do you believe that? And, and you're in faith for that? Uh, now that you're redeemed... Oh, see, I lost my place. Lord, forgive me. Uh, now that you've got this place... Uh, this is what I want to talk about today. The title of our message is Purchased for a Purpose. You are purchased for a purpose. Another way of saying it is redeemed for a reason. You have been redeemed for a reason. You are now a soldier in God's army. And in time, you want to become a deployable soldier. You want to become a deployable, a deployable one one that God can send out to do kingdom work. That's what you want to do. You and I are to grow in our relationship with Jesus as our Lord, and that's where it all starts. Jesus loves you personally, just like that little song we used to sing. Jesus loves you, and he wants a personal relationship with you. But after that, as we develop in that relationship, we want to grow to the point that we can do the good things that God planned for us long ago here on the earth. Is that your desire? Is that your heart to do what God's called you to do? Now, when you're born again, you receive the Holy Spirit, that the Spirit of God comes to dwell in you. And with him, he brings a gift from heaven for you that you are to grow in, you're to develop in, and you're to function in during your days on this earth. When you get born again, when you got saved, you're baptized into the body of Christ, the Holy Spirit comes in and, and joins with your spirit, and he brings with him a gift from heaven for you to grow in, to operate in, to function in during your days on this earth. You need to know that and be in faith for that. Now, whether you know what that gift is, whether you believe in it, whether you're pursuing it, doesn't change the fact that you have this gift. It doesn't change the fact. Whether you know it or not, you've got it. We all have a gift. Turn with me, if you would, to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. The fourth verse says, There are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit, the Spirit of God, is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it's the same God who does the work in all of us. Now, you may be here today and you think, well, okay, you say there's gifts of the Spirit and I got one. You know, you may have got one, she may have got one, but I'm not sure about me. I don't know if I got one. Well, verse 7 will answer that question for you. One of these days, I'm going to get one of those beer hats with a cross on it and some straws, and I'm not going to have to drink like this anymore. I'm just going to sip as I talk. Verse 7, a spiritual gift, <laughs> a spiritual gift is given to each of us. Now, that would include you, right? You're in each of us. Now, why were we given this gift? So, it tells us right here, so that you, we can help each other. That's the reason you got this spiritual gift, so that we can help each other. You didn't get this gift to make you famous or to make you popular or to make you rich or comfortable. Now, those could be benefits of that. You can be rich and operate in your spiritual gift. You could be famous and operate in your spiritual gift, but that's not the motive. That's not the reason God gave you the gift. Why did God give you the gift? To help each other, to help the body of Christ. That's exactly right. Okay, um, this gift, remember we said earlier that we are a soldier in God's army. We're like a soldier in his army now, right? This gift is like your weapon that the Lord has given you to help the army of saints win here on the earth. We should be winning. 
We should be taking ground for the kingdom of God. And this gift that the Lord gave you that you've got inside of you, it's like your weapon as a soldier that you're to develop in and learn about so that you can help us win. So let me make this passage more for today. Let's make it kind of real for right now. Let's say that we have 10 people. This is what Paul's saying. Here at Southern Heights, we've got 10 people on this side of the church that all have the same spiritual gift. When you got born again, 10 of you all got the same gift. Over here, we've got 10 that have a different gift than them, but we've got 10 over here that have the same gift. We've got five back here that have a gift. We've got five up here that have a gift. What Paul's saying, he's saying, look, it's the same God that we serve. We're in the same army. We're fighting the same fight, the fight of faith. And he says that it's the same spirit, the Holy Spirit that's given each of us the gift. But what he's saying is we may use that gift. Out of the 10 over here that have the same gift, you may use that in different ways here at Southern Heights. You may not all use it. We have different ways of serving. But you've heard me preach about this before, and I would preach on this for six months straight because we have to know this. We have to get this. God knows exactly where your gift needs to be. He knows the body the company of believers, the the group of soldiers that you need to be hooked to, he knows where you need to be and where that gift needs to be functioning. And when we come together and we all do what he's called us to do, we are gonna be like special forces up in here for God's army. I mean, the Lord can call on us to do some mighty things, but without the gifts, we're not, I mean, we just can't do it without his power. These gifts are his power. As we grow as believers, this gift will start to become developed and become more evident. As you grow this Holy Spirit gift, you're going to start to recognize what your gift is. You're going to start to sense, man, God's kind of gifted me to do this. He's called me. And then those around about you, they're going to start to recognize your gift and confirm it. You know, Daniel encouraged me last week. Remember what he said? He said some, some good things. Uh, he said that when I teach and preach, it helps him. And that, we want to encourage each other like that because it helps you to keep going and not quit and, and spur on. Now, if you're not growing, this is important, if you're not growing, if you're not developing, you may never know what your gift is. You may never find out what it is. Even though it's in there, if you don't value it, if you don't care about God's army, you don't care about winning, you don't care about helping anybody else, this gift, even though you got it, it could just be dormant, just sitting in there waiting. This growth doesn't happen all at once. Uh, We need to know this. This growth doesn't happen all at once. You're not gonna come up here and get baptized today, receive the Holy Spirit, receive your gift, and tomorrow get up and walk in the full manifestation, the full power of that. That's that's not gonna happen. It's not that God couldn't do that. He could. He could use you that way, but it would be out of character. That wouldn't be the norm for him to operate that way. It's normally a seed time and harvest process. It's a growing process. It takes faithfulness and training to develop as a soldier in God's army. It takes faithfulness and training to develop. You know, it's very similar to being a soldier in the United States military, very similar. And uh, I wanna be real clear here because I know we've got some military past, retired, whatever, and we honor you guys. We're grateful for you. I wanna be very clear here. I was never in the service. I never joined the military. But I have the Holy Spirit living inside of me. I've got the Spirit of God in me And he gave me some amazing revelation about what being a soldier in his army, how that compares, how the natural military mirrors these principles. And and he's an expert, whether I know anything about it or not, he's an expert so I can trust his leadership. Now, I have cut hair at Fort Leonard Wood, and that's kind of like saying you stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night, I know, right? You... uh, (laughs) You remember those commercials? Man, those were funny. There was the, the one that they're around the surgery table. They got this guy stretched out there and the doctor's snipping a little bit. And he says, blood pressure. And they say, uh, what's good? 120 over 80. Is that good, Lord? 
120 over 80. Good, 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 good. Okay, folks, well, everything looks good here. Sew him up. And uh, he pulls his mask down. And they said, well, you're not Dr. Smith. And he said, I know. But I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night. And they're like, oh, okay. And they, they <laughs> those, were, those were great. But anyway, uh, I know that me saying I cut hair at a military post doesn't qualify me as a military expert or a training expert. But like I said, I got the spirit of God in me. But, you know, I've cut hair down there for 12 years, I guess, off and on. And I've done everything from basic training haircuts where you're just buzzing their head all the way up to the highest rank guys in the military have been my regular customers and everywhere, every rank in between. And so I've been around it. I've seen some of their training. I've witnessed how they do things on posts and I've talked to a lot of people. And when the Lord gave me this revelation about six years ago, I ran it by some of my higher rank military guys and asked them, does this hold water? And they said, yeah, this hold, that's good. That holds water. Uh, so I believe the Lord's given me the freedom to talk about it. And that's what I want to kind of go into here today. Now, remember what we're talking about. We're talking about now that you're redeemed, you're saved. What's next? Do we just wait to die? No, you've been given a gift from the Holy Spirit. We got to get in our place and do what God's called us to do. We want to develop and grow in these gifts. And as we do, we're going to get strong. But now we're talking about how being a soldier in God's army compares to being a soldier in the natural army. And the Lord gave me some revelation on this, and I'm going to share some of these points with you. Now, today, I'm only going to hit probably one. We're about done. Uh, But I'm going to come back in a couple weeks and finish this message. I'll give you all the rest of the points that he gave me. And uh, let me tell you just real quick how this happened. This was about six years ago. I was on an off day. I was home. I had sat on the couch there. I had my Bibles and my books and some notebooks. And I had spent the whole day with the Lord. I mean, I was just praying and talking. And I would write a little, read a little. And I'm sitting on the couch and the sun's coming through the window behind me. And as I'm sitting there praying, it's like the the warmth of God just surrounded me. It's the best way I can explain it. And all of a sudden, this revelation starts coming up out of my spirit about being a soldier in God's army. And this isn't coming out of my natural mind. This is coming up out of my spirit. And so I grabbed a notebook and paper and just started writing these points down as quick as I could write them. And this is why you hear me talking about being a soldier all the time. I mention this almost every time I preach. I'll say something about you being a warrior, you not quitting, you fighting the good fight of faith. And it all started on this particular day. And that's why I I talk about it so much. But before I share this point with you from today, let me give you this disclaimer. And this is very, very important. You all need to hear this. Anytime somebody stands up and says, I'm going to give you a word that the Lord told me, or I'm going to tell you something I believe the Lord's saying, or I sense the Lord saying, you want to listen and you judge these words. You judge these words. You don't let somebody stand up and say, this is what God said, and just spoon feed you this and you receive it as the gospel truth. You don't do that. Now, if I'm teaching you the scripture, man, you get on it. You read it, right? I mean, you receive that right away. But if it's my experience, my interpretation, uh, you want to judge these things and see if they line up with the word or not. Because here's the deal. If I've got the Holy Spirit in me, you've got the Holy Spirit in you, right? As the Holy Spirit's ministering through me and these words are coming out, If it's God, you will get a witness on the inside. Yeah, this is good. This is God. If it's not, then you might get a check. Like, uh, I don't know about that. If that happens, what do you do? You don't stand up and cuss me out in the middle of church and and holler at me and tell me I'm wrong or I'm a whatever. You know, you, you, you hold on to it. You don't throw it away but you don't just receive it yet. You hold on to it. When you go home, you pray, you get in the word, you ask God and he'll make it clear to you. Okay. He'll show you. So like I said, I'm just going to give you really one point and a couple definitions, and then I'll come back in a couple weeks. So as I'm sitting there that day, the first thing that comes to me is look up this definition, develop for the word develop. So I looked up develop, develop means to grow and become more mature, more advanced, 
and more elaborate. That word elaborate means you, you operate in greater detail, greater understanding. To grow, become more mature, more advanced, more elaborate. The next word that came to me was look up the definition of soldier. Soldier means someone who serves in an army. Someone who does what? Serves. Someone who serves in an army. You and I want to develop. We want to grow and become more mature, more advanced, more elaborate as soldiers in God's army. That's what we want to do. So here's the first point that the Lord gave me that day. A soldier is developed. A committed soldier is so developed by the training learned beforehand that when the pressure comes or they are in the worst of battle, they will not forsake what they've learned. A committed soldier is so developed by the training learned beforehand that when the pressure comes or the worst of battle, you're in the worst of battle, you will not forsake what you've learned. You know, Fort Leonard Wood's a training post, right? And that's what they do there. They are training soldiers for a wartime situation. That's why they have them stay up for 24, 48 hours. They got them crawling through mud, shooting in 40 mile an hour winds. They're running through fields with bombs dropping around them. Why? They are preparing them for battle. And so when they're in the middle of the battle, they will be so developed and so trained in their call, their job, that when things are going crazy around them, they don't lay down. They keep advancing. They hold the line. They stay focused. They don't get distracted. And that's what you and I are to do as soldiers in God's army. You and I are to be so trained in these gifts, so developed, so, so strong in them, that when things go crazy around us, we don't fold under the pressure. When you lose your job, somebody lets you down, somebody disappoints you and betrays you, the church is dividing and falling apart, things are going crazy, we don't quit. We don't lay down. We rise up and we hold the line and we continue to advance the kingdom of God on the earth. When COVID shows up and tries to wreak havoc, we don't fold. We stay in faith. We stay strong. This is scriptural. This, uh, the word tells us to be built on a solid foundation, doesn't it? You guys remember that scripture? It tells us that we are to be built on the rock of Christ. That's the rock we're to be built on so that when what happens, when the storm comes, we sang that song a while ago and when I heard those lyrics, it reminded me of this message. When the storm comes, the wind's blowing, things are falling apart, we, our house won't fall. Here's something you need to know. We don't put our faith in a man. You never put your faith in a man. You don't put your faith in a job. You don't put your faith in a bank account or your money. You put your faith in God. Amen. That's what we're to build on. That will keep us strong. Now, this is where it starts. This is just the start of this message. Like I said, I'm going to come back. But over the next couple of weeks, uh, I want to challenge you to think about your place in God's army. I want you to start thinking about this. I want you to build your faith. I want you to start to get in faith that you're going to use the gift that the Holy Spirit gave you to help us. You're not just going to sit here with this gift dormant inside of you. You're going to start growing. You're going to start getting with it. You're going to start training with us. And the Lord's going to do something mighty. I mean, I cannot wait to see what the Lord's going to do when we get a church of people that are doing this. Man, I'm telling you, I believe this is the, the, the start of the end times. There is going to be a party in the church and people are going to be like, whatever's going on there, they're going to have one last chance to repent, to turn from Satan and come to God. But it's going to be how they're going to see it and hear about it is through the church operating in the power God's called us to operate. We're going to be a strong special forces unit for the kingdom of God. Amen. Amen. Let's all stand to our feet. If the band wants to come forward, be in faith for this. You know, the word says faith comes from hearing.
That's how you, you, you get faith by you hear the word, you meditate the word, you chew on the word, and over time, it gets real to you. It, get, it comes alive on the inside, and it'll start making a difference. This, it starts with faith. We have to be in faith that we're going to be soldiers in God's army. Amen? If you're here today and, and you've never put your faith in Christ, you're serving the wrong general, man. He, you're on Satan's team. You're in his army, and that's a bad place to be. That's going to get you smoked here before too long. You don't want to be on that team. So I want to encourage you, if you're here and you've never put your faith in Jesus, uh, don't hesitate. Today's your day to come forward. We'll be here waiting for you, and we'll help you. Amen?